segments of Project 17, but here we are, final phase of the year. We're in here to, number one, we're evaluating the progress of everything that we've done up to this point, and we're preparing for putting all our fall food plots in. We got a heck of a rain today, so we're gonna be delayed till tomorrow to actually plant, but we're out here putting uh, lime and fertilizer down on all the fall food plot areas that I picked up from the local ag, um, the uh, Siri Solutions here in town. Brought it out here with the, the fertilizer buggy. We're putting it down now. But just checking out the progress of the clover, um, all, the, all the roads, the fire breaks around this field, the soybeans, the switchgrass, blue, big blue and Indian grass and the warm season grass stands is looking phenomenal. And just making an assessment of everything. But the icing on the cake for this thing is putting the fall food plots in place and strategically setting two or three scrape trees, some basically a, some fake tree spots where we're gonna hang uh, licking branches in and get bucks conditioned to start using them before uh, the rut really stay, takes, takes place and we can get those within uh, bow range of our a few spots that we have stand sites selected. We actually did tree stands here last weekend. The hard work's done, this is the fun part. We're putting the final detailed touches on this thing and when we walk out of here and pull the equipment out of here today, the field gets locked down and we're not coming back here again until it's time to check a few cameras and get ready to hunt. Probably a 26, 28 yard shot from the blind to right here. And again, this inside corner wrapping around food plot right over the corner here. Tremendous travel corridor right here and we're going to run a Moultrie cell cam right behind us there on the first tree inside this inside the timber line there and basically setting a trap a big buck trap right here we're using a sassafras because of the aromatic qualities of the wood it smells great and i'm convinced that deer choose aromatic trees to rub on like cedar and white pine and spruce and sassafras for that reason they don't solely rub on those but i think it's part of their what, what attracts them to it we're just loaded with sassafras and beech down here around these edges, so I thought it would be kind of cool to use a, a sassafras main post as the trunk, and we're going to drill in and hang in some beech tree limbs because of the, qual um, the leaf on the beech tree holds all the way till springtime before the buds push them off, so there always are leaves on it on the limbs, and it's just a I think it's just going to add more natural attraction to them. So then we can. With it being drilled through here, we're gonna use a big wood auger bit and run our limbs in here at a, at a couple angles and get a couple different directions with that in mind behind it. But then as these dry up and get unattractive, we can just pull them out and go cut some new ones and stick them right back in. But the main frame will be the sassafras log and it ought to, it ought to be good for a few years anyway. back in this plot and in the uh, northeast corner of Project 17. If you guys remember, this is the area that we planted dual season in back in spring as a holdover crop. And I can tell you it, it did extremely well and I almost felt guilty mowing it down because I told you it was going to be a temporary and we we're going to come back in here with a fall cool season annual mix for greens and grains for hunting season. But the sorghum and the buckwheat in that planting were shoulder high in here and just as dense as can be. The deer were feeding in it. You know, you get over the think you just had such a great successful plot uh, uh, do well and, and you kind of struggle with the thought of setting it back and, and tilling it in the ground. That's exactly what we did. We mowed it. You can see all the sorghum. It, it chopped up like silage into this, the soil. So we've added a lot of organic matter. But the soil worked out beautifully. We had eight tenths of an inch of rain yesterday and it's hotter than blue blazes out today. We had some sun and wind and it's, it's drying off perfectly and we worked this ground and getting ready to do my favorite planting of all time for fall time and that is the, the Pennington's Feeding Frenzy. It's a great combination of greens and grains and it has a radish in it, it has Austrian winter pea and it's just got a, a big spectrum of, of available and attractive plants for fall time all the way through early winter and into next spring as the, the soil warms back up. But what we're gonna do as a caveat to that, we're gonna go right back in with some dual season as an additive to this blend. And you would say, why in the world would you wanna do that? Well, it does, if you remember, it has the uh, iron and clay cowpeas and it has soybeans in it. 
If you guys know what soybeans, young tender soybeans, you're trying to protect them in the springtime because the deer browse is so heavy on them, we're gonna let them have free reign at these soybeans and uh, cowpeas in this blend. So it's just another layer of attraction that we're doubling up on top of our feeding frenzy to add what they want. And we know that they want soybeans. And so we're gonna put that in this, there's about eight tenths of an acre here, but my deer density, I'm gonna go ahead and put one acre's worth of seed in the box and make sure we've got enough to cover it all. But um, had some great help today, a bunch of buddies showed up. We're struggling getting stuff done between the rains, but it's a good day. Fall plots are going in the ground.